Welcome to Redeemer. Hello! Great to see you. Welcome to Redeemer. Welcome, guys. Hello! Good to have you with us. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Redeemer Church. It's so great to see you all today. Yeah, we'd love to say welcome to Redeemer. All those of you that have had your hair cut in the last week, you're looking terrific. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we are so glad that you've decided to join us this morning at Home with Redeemer. Whether it's your first week or you've been watching us since the start, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my name's Pete and this is Lois and we're thrilled that you've joined us at Home with Redeemer this morning. We would love to see where you're watching us from this morning. We're both a bit nosy, aren't we? So make sure you take a picture and you upload it to Instagram. You can tag us at Redeemer London so we can see. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos that we're posting throughout the week. Yeah, very excited this week. I know that Toby's going to be putting out several more videos. He's got a whole new series starting this week going forward, so it's well worth signing up. Anyway, let's pray, eh? Father, we thank you so much that we can come and meet with you, the living God. Whatever our week has been like, whether easing of lockdown, almost some normality creeping back in, or whether actually we're still shielding and, and just feeling very nervous about the next week and the next month. God, we love the fact that each week we take these moments to pause, pause together mm. with your family and fix our eyes upon you. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would meet with every single person who's watching this today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Yeah, we are live this morning. Um, we believe that God is here with us and yes. that he is ready to speak. So we Fantastic. encourage you to listen to what he has to say. And mm. if there's something that you'd like to share, maybe a Bible verse, something you feel God stirring in your heart, or even a prayer request, then please text it in to either me or Pete, and we'll be able to share it with everyone. Another thing that we've loved doing really during this uh, lockdown is different people from the church have shared their testimony, just how God made an impact in their life. And I'm thrilled this morning that we've got Pamela who's sharing hers. Thanks. Hi, I'm Pamela and I'm going to share my testimony. By my late 20s, I was happy but was quite unsatisfied. I was well respected at work, um, but I felt unchallenged as I had fulfilled what the role required. My social life was quite dry and I was spiritually starved, really disconnected and unchallenged at, in a really religious church. And I was really religious. God was up here, but he wasn't here. So I decided to go backpack traveling um, this time two years ago. And it was game changing. Absolutely amazing. Um, at the end of my travel, I had met a guy and it ended quicker than it started. And I was really hurt and upset. I wrote a prayer to God where I said that I was tired of feeling vulnerable and I'd never classed myself as vulnerable before and what it did was expose to me that I had some past hurts that hadn't been healed. And I think they stemmed from university where I got a good degree and I have lots of lifelong friends but I had a lot of encounters with people that weren't so good and I felt really um, judged and misunderstood and hurt quite a few times and it knocked my confidence and made me feel small. And that set the precedent for the rest of my 20s where I would recline rather than shine and I would retreat before people had the opportunity to reject me. I settled for mediocrity because it felt safe. I was not much of a go-getter in my 20s. Um, once I returned from my travels, within a month, I gave my life to Christ and I got baptised and it was great. And I was being challenged and pushed and I was being fed with this amazing preaching and I learnt to dream big and that God really, really does love me and to read my Bible every day now um, and to actually follow what it says and that God isn't just for a box on Sunday, he's for everything that we do, he needs to be in all areas of our life and from that I went from building a community project to now a Christian community project called ACTS Film Festival. Early this year, someone was praying for me and they said, oh, you know, my, my strong daughter, Pamela, my strong daughter. And I was like, what? God thinks I'm strong after feeling so vulnerable. And yeah, because for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. 
but she also said there's something blocking you know there's something that's blocking blessings and I knew that I knew that there was something still holding me back I'd repented from my sins I'd been baptized but I felt like deliverance still needed to happen a few days ago I was reading my bible and something told me to stand up and I did and I had this mighty encounter with God where his presence was incredibly tangible and it was amazing I wrote it down in my new prayer journal but I needed to write the date and I didn't know the date so I looked at my phone and it stood out because this date um linked a person at university who hurt me the guy in my travels who hurt me the day that I flew out on my travels and the day that I had this mighty encounter with God and I thought this is either coincidence or significance I randomly decided to open my old prayer journal and on a page mid page the first thing I read was God makes all things come together he will use you your mistakes your self-doubt and your hurt your sorrow is part of your story for his glory and then it went on to say let your talents and skills shine don't be shy and I was just so overwhelmed I then wanted to capture the bit of scripture I was reading that led to this big encounter and it was Exodus 6 of Moses bringing uh, Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage into freedom. And at the top of the chapter, the subheading was promises of deliverance. Since my baptism, God has really pruned me. It hasn't been easy, but it's been good. And he's stripped me of things spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. Um, but I feel like he's done it to show me that my joy, my peace and my provision are not found in that job or that crowd or that guy. It is in him solely because I have a joy and a peace which is amazing in the wilderness, but it's amazing. And I thank God for that, for everything he's doing for and through me. He really is a good, present, loving God. Great, thank you so much, Pamela. It's great hearing about God is in charge of your life and our joy is found in Him. Yeah, we are now going to hand over to Toby and the team who are going to lead us in a time of worship. Thank you so much. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was mine till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures, I tried. Too hard. It was my turn till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious state oh, oh, oh. Now your mercy has saved my soul And I know the old man knew Jesus where I met you when you called my name. I ran out of that grave, not of the darkness into your glorious state. Oh, my name, and I ran 
so much Toby and the team just like to read a few verses to you from Romans chapter 5 God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us since we have now been justified by his blood how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've now received reconciliation. The great thing about the Christian life is it's nothing to do with us. It's what Jesus Christ has done for us. That is grace, and that is why we sin. Amen. Um, if it is your first time with us, we would just like to say a big welcome again. We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning. If we were together in person, we would normally get you to fill out an I'm new here form. But since we can't do that, we've put a page on our website where you can fill in your details. And it means that someone from the church will be able to get in contact with you this week. We uh, have also done something else new this morning. Uh, after the meeting, we're going to do a Zoom. And so if you have uh, been coming along and we've never met you, maybe in the last three or four months and you just think, oh, I've started watching this on YouTube or I've filled in one of those forms and we've had some filled in over the few weeks. And you think it'd be great to talk to somebody in person. We would love to invite you to join us on Zoom after this meeting. I believe that the details are going to be coming up now in the chat. So hopefully we'll see you after the meeting. We've also got something very exciting starting next Sunday, the 19th of July. It is our week of prayer, Brilliant. so it's going to be Love. running through until the 25th. We've got so many things planned. We've got morning prayer meetings, we've got lunchtime yeah. prayer meetings, evening prayer meetings, worship nights, prayer, prayer walks. walks. Yeah. Yeah. Really. It's going to be an amazing week where we come together and we pray to the living God and we really encourage you to join us with that. The details have been emailed out, but they are also on our website. So we hope to see you there. 24 hour prayer is, uh, is going to be running. Uh, the 2 to 4 a.m. slot is already gone, but rush <laughs> and grab some of the others. It'll be great to have you join us. Yeah. Now I want to share with you a little bit about what we call impact. It's people that take a year out, any age, to say, I'm going to serve God and I'm going to grow. And we're going to find out a little bit about the exciting news for Redeemer and impact starting from September. Hey, Anna, it's great to be able to chat to you about impact uh, i'm so excited to know that you're going to be doing it with us from september so i've just got three little questions uh, about this year and about yourself so that people can get to know you a little bit more and get to know about impact if that's all right cool yeah cool so question one well the first thing we want to know is just tell us a little bit about yourself you've got 30 seconds okay um my name is anna um i am from nottingham uh in the heart of the midlands me and robin hood yeah um and i moved to london through four years ago to train at the arts educational school which is in chiswick um, and i did musical theater there and um, yeah, so I studied there for three years and then I left drama school um, and the last year I've kind of, I've been working quite a few different jobs in all honesty. I've done a bit of acting and a bit of musical theatre and I've also done a bit of teaching and worked in a gym and, um, and now I'm training to be a PT. Woohoo! Oh, nice. <laughs> cool. Um, well, that, that kind of leads us on, I guess quite well to my second question, which is what made you decide to do Impact with us? Um, so I hadn't really thought about it in all honesty. And, um, and then, you know, I was just living my life and then lockdown happened and I knew, I kind of knew and I, I kind of prayed as well. I was like, God, I just don't want my life to look the same um, before lockdown as it will after and I guess it, it couldn't like really look the same because so many things have changed and um 
job wise and stuff like that and um so I got to a bit of a place where I was like I really don't know what I'm gonna do after lockdown um and Pete rang me and he was like Anna have you ever thought about doing an impact cheer and I was like Pete no (laughs) (laughs) and then once the idea was sort of like planted um yeah I was like oh actually and I was thinking it through and I spoke a bit to Josh Gagel about it he's just done his and I it just got into my head like I was just really really excited and I was like the idea of doing it was making me really like excited and I felt like a, a real sense of like yeah yeah this is something you should definitely do so uh, yeah no right. I'm, I'm buzzing for it yeah well that's great well my third question is what are you most excited about about impact um I think you know I'm I'm really excited to just like like be involved with this church and so I love this church Toby I love Redeemer I think it's like especially over lockdown I've realized like how much I love the church family and I think you know serving and getting involved with different areas of of the church I'm I'm really excited for and obviously to be in the church office around so many wise people Toby including myself (laughs) um which is exciting and also Toby I've heard there's a trip to Centre Parks at some point in the year. Um, <laughs> but, um, so I think, like, you do get to go away for, like, discipleship training, and one of them is at Centre Parks, which is great. Um, but, yeah, for that side, too, I think, like, I'm ready. I'm kind of just like, God, I'm ready. Like, I'm, I want to be like a sponge, and I want to, like, just soak up loads of, like, mm. wisdom and knowledge and, um, and learn as well so yeah I'm, I'm really excited to like be serving the church and also to grow myself as well I think. brilliant well that sounds great uh, and we're really excited to have you church I would encourage you to pray for Anna as she prepares to do this impact year and as she does it pray that she grows as she said but that also she's she's blessed as she serves and blesses us i'd encourage you to invite her around for dinner to send her gifts in the post to bless her she's going to be an incredible (laughs) blessing to us as a church this year and i'd love that we uh, could bless her as well this year we're going to see a little video now just explaining a little bit more about what impact is all about and maybe to stir you if you're thinking about what you might do this next academic year. It's not too late for you to join us as well. When Jesus calls someone to follow him, he invites them to a life of meaning and purpose. He draws them into God's bigger story for the world and he calls them to discover a new way of being human. I want to take a minute to tell you about some of the different ways that you can give some time to get further trained and equipped to step into God's big plan for your life. Before I went off to uni, God derailed my life and I ended up doing a couple of years serving the church. In those couple of years, it was the best time of my life. God really broke me down uh, and rebuilt me and he really put his mission for the world in my heart. He really broke my heart for what breaks his. In that time as well, God really helped me to work through a lot of hurt and pain that I'd faced in my past. Whether it's equipping people to work in the local church or whether it's equipping people to use their gifts in the marketplace, we offer a range of different training programs all designed to help you grow as a follower of Jesus. There are year-long programs like Impact that offer an immersive experience in a local church working alongside people in pastoral leadership. On all of our training programs, you'll have opportunity to learn for yourself how to hear from God and discover all of the amazing things contained in the Bible. You'll have opportunities to pray for the sick and share your faith with others. You'll gain practical life skills like handling your finances or managing your time. And you'll do it all in the context of community and friendship, meeting people from all over the world. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes to a church in Turkey praying for them, praying that they would discover for themselves how high and how wide and how deep is the love of God in Christ Jesus. It's that prayer that we want to see answered for yourself. So. Take a step towards your future in God. We would love to see you step into God's plan for your future.
Right, I'm really looking forward to Anna joining us in the office for the 1st of September. That will be wonderful. What about you? Do I need to give you a call or are you going to get in contact with me? I'd love to hear from anyone else in the church that would like to consider doing impact with us. Yeah, we are now going to watch a video introducing the fruit that we're looking at this week. Great, we've now been joined on the sofa by Steve. Steve lives with us, he's a lawyer, but he actually writes amazing poetry, part of the church. And this week, he's going to read us the poem all to do with the fruit of the Spirit we're looking at. Good morning. The fruit of the Spirit is goodness. Like a sprinkler system in the height of summer. Like a cold compress on a bruised, sore head. Like gentle air con on a humid night, like a heated blanket on a cold child's bed, like an unexpected place offered at the table, like a smile of recognition from an old thought lost friend. May your goodness, Lord, flow undiminished through me mm. to whoever comes round the next bed. May your sweet goodness be my signature tune. May it always be following me. May my friends taste and see that you are good and know for themselves your good mercy. Fantastic. Thanks, Steve. Right, now we're going to go and have our Bible reading. So, Kayla, we're loving it week after week. Thanks again. Hey church, today we're reading from Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 26. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Great, good morning. Um, it's changed around a bit here. It's Nikki, I am Pete's wife. I'm part of the leadership of the church and I, it's my privilege to be speaking to you today. And we're in this series at the moment looking at cultivating the fruit of the spirit and the importance of this collective fruit being visible in us. The fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control and when we're full of the spirit and we're being led by the spirit it causes these virtues these characteristics to naturally albeit gradually grow and develop within us it's all about life by the spirit and this week we're going to be looking at goodness what do we mean by goodness what does goodness look like are you a good person? Am I a good person? And what determines that? Is it morality? Is it people who keep the law? They follow government advice in lockdown, unlike some politicians that we're not naming. But you know, you're a law-abiding citizen. 
Does that make you good? Or is it legacy? Is it people who leave the world a better place? You know, they fight for the big issues. People like Mother Teresa, who self-sacrificially gave herself for the work of the poor. Or Martin Luther King Jr., who was the American activist fighting for civil rights. Surely making your life count, does that make you good? Or is it comparative? You know, many of us might see our life a bit like a pair of scales and as long as we do more good things than bad, then we'll be okay. Or we compare ourselves with other people, particularly those who aren't doing as well as us. After all, if they're not doing so well, it paints us in a better light. I might get this wrong, but at least I'm not as bad as that person. But we know as Christians that our comparison should not be horizontal, it shouldn't be with others, but it should be with God, it should be vertical. Since we know from the Bible that God is the one who is good. And when we compare ourselves to God, we probably recognise that in and of ourselves, we are not good. It says in Romans 7, 18 to 19, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I don't want to do, this I keep on doing. And that can be so true, can't it? We can start the day well, we can read our Bibles, we can think, oh, we're doing so well. And then before we know it, we've lost our temper in the car getting to work, mm -hmm. and then we've lied to a colleague to get ourselves out of, out of a fix. And it's probably only 9.30. And you know, we can get so frustrated with ourselves. We can think, is being good even possible? Well, the good news is that we are made in the image of God. And since God is good, we all have the potential and the capacity for goodness. It comes from the spirit of God living in us. He is the source of all goodness. So when we think about what is goodness, we know that goodness is God. Yes. Sometimes at church we say, God is good all of the time, all, all of the time, time, God is good. And this is so true. It's something that is frequently and fundamenta fundamentally stated throughout the Bible. You know, in Psalm 119, 68, it says, you are good and yes. what you do is good. It is the very essence of who God is. Everything else that we believe about God is centered around this truth that God is good. Everything good originates with him. In James 1, 17, it says, all good gifts come yes. from God. And I don't know what's happening in your life right now. Maybe you have a job, maybe you don't. Maybe your relationships are working out or not. Maybe God's not answering your prayers in the way that you want. But the truth is that God is still good. And God does what is good. I wonder if we believe that. Even when bad things happen, God can use it for good. There's a story in the Bible about a man named Joseph. He had some pretty big challenges in life. He was hated by his brothers. He was sold into slavery. He was wrongly accused of misconduct, thrown into prison. Finally, he is rescued and he is promoted to prime minister to govern the whole nation's food supply. And when his brothers finally come to meet him, he, he could have been bitter, he could have been arrogant, he could have been seeking revenge. But he said to them in Genesis 50, 20, it says, you intended to harm me, mm. but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And Joseph could recognize God's goodness in the bigger story. Actually, God, what was could be perceived as a bad situation, God used for good and for his purposes. And that doesn't mean that evil in and of itself is good, but it does mean that God's goodness is sovereign. Yes. God is in control of every situation and God is good.
And since God is good, the more we have of God in our lives by his Holy Spirit, the more we're going to become like him in our thoughts, in our speech, in our attitudes, in our actions. It's going to grow in us because it flows from God. Okay, so what is at the heart of goodness? What does it look like for us to be good and do good? I'm going to suggest two things. The first is that goodness is authentic. Many commentaries liken it to the word integrity. It's about being good. And secondly, it's active. It's not just resisting evil, but it's about pursuing, about doing good. So firstly, it is authentic. It's, it's a way of being that is transparent. It's a bit like this glass of water. It's pure. What you see is what you get. That's what integrity means. A bit like Daniel in the Bible, he was described as having a spirit of excellence, as being trustworthy. There was no corruption in him. He was committed to doing the right thing just because it was the right thing to do, despite the consequences. He wasn't just going to take the easy way out. And goodness is like that. It's not just external. It's just not just an outward appearance. Brennan Manning, who is the author of um, the book Ragamuffin Gospel, says the temptation of the age is to look good without being good. And I can find that's true. Sometimes you think, actually, you can do good things to feel better about yourself or because you're worried about what other people think. And it's more about impressing others than doing the right thing. Actually, that's artificial goodness. It's much like the religious leaders or the Pharisees were like in the Bible. And Jesus called them out on this. He said, you Pharisees, Pharisee, you, you um, hypocrites, sorry. And hypocrites is just play acting. It's when you preach one thing, but you do another. Mm. And to be fair, I think it's probably something that we all struggle with at times. Goodness, on the other hand, it requires a truthfulness, an absolute consistency, a sameness in every situation, from place to place, from person to person, in private and in public. I think some of us, we can be, be so full of morals at home and then we're just totally different people at work, you know, especially if we're out with colleagues, one drink too many, coarse language, or we're exemplary at work, you know, we're just always key to impress the boss and then at home we're just horrible. There is a lack of sincerity. I don't know if you've seen the film um, Catch Me If You Can, I love it. It's based on a true story on the life of Frank Abagnale who is the biggest phonely you can imagine. And he ends up deceiving so many people. He poses as a fake pilot, a fake doctor, a fake lawyer. And he forges millions of fake checks. Um, and after a spell in prison, he's actually employed by the FBI because he's so good at fraud um, and so good at deceiving people. And it might not be to the same extent, but I think, you know, so many of us can find it easy to deceive others and to be slightly fake in situations. To be good is to be authentic, to be real to have a good and a pure heart, a transparency about us. Mm. And this can only come through the Holy Spirit working in us. And secondly, goodness is active. It plays out in the world in which we live. When God created the world, it was good, it was perfect, it was as he intended. But then our independence from God's plan brought sin, and with the evil and brokenness. And so part of goodness is bringing things back to the way that God intended them to be, restoring the brokenness. In Matthew 5, 13, it says, you are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. And we can see brokenness all around us. You know, you only have to watch the news to see this. And in the midst of it, God wants us to be like salt and light, to be different, to be distinctive. You know, salt was 
used in ancient times to preserve meat, to stop the rot in it, uh, to keep it good. And light, it, it's like a beacon, it shows the way, it's, it's like a warning to others. And we become like this when we live lives that reflect the goodness of a God who cares for the broken, of a God who cares for those in need. When we're compassionate, when we're committed to justice and speaking out, whether it's abortion or racism or fostering or abuse, it's a deep desire not to allow the world to stay as it is, but to see change. It's actually confrontive and really powerful. It's not something that's bland and tame. Mm. In lockdown, we have watched the film Just Mercy, also based on a true story, slightly more inspiring to be like this person. It's uh, the true story of Brian Stevenson, who is a black lawyer who fights tirelessly for people on death row in the United States. Either people that have been wrongly condemned or they can't afford proper representation. And you watch it and he just has this ruthless determination about him. And, you know, when I watch it, I think, do I have the same determination in my life? I think no matter who we are, we all have the potential for justice where we are. I read a book recently, it was a great one, Ken Witzma, um, it's called Pursuing Justice, and he says it starts, justice starts with the small things, to value others and to focus more on your responsibilities than your rights. And I think in an entitlement culture where we're so self-centered, this can be a challenge, actually to think about other people and to look to serve them in terms of our time and our money and our energy. This is what goodness looks like in action. At the end of the day, doing good is our mandate. We see Paul underlining this throughout the letters in the New Testament. They're not the means of salvation, but they are the purpose of it. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10 says, for it's by grace that you've been saved. It's not, it's through faith and it's not of yourselves, but it's a gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. For we're God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Doing good doesn't save us. If you're thinking that getting right with God is about you being good enough, that's not the case. The Bible says the only way that we can be right with God is because of Jesus and what he has done for us. He lived the perfect life for us. We're saved through faith in him. Good works don't save us, but they are what we are saved for. In Titus 3.14, Paul writes, devote yourselves to doing what is good. And as we allow the Holy Spirit to change our hearts to being good, and our desire to do good, it's going to reflect the gospel. You know, the gospel is this wonderful story of God's love and goodness to his people. It shows how the goodness of God overcame all the evil of Satan. Every lie, every abuse, every adultery, every murder, every theft, every injustice, every wrong that you and I have ever done and every wrong that's ever been done to us. He bore it in himself in the form of his son, Jesus. And he defeated death when he rose again. The cross is the ultimate expression of the goodness of God. And goodness has this incredible power, therefore, to show the truth of the gospel living in us. Since we can only be good because of him. C.S. Lewis, who's a Christian author and theologian, said the Christian does not think God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good because he loves us. God is the only one that can make us good. He's the one that brings the transformation Goodness comes from him. So what is goodness? It, goodness is God. Goodness is authentic and goodness is active. 
So let's, let's allow God's goodness to flow in and through us by his Holy Spirit, helping us to be authentically good and actively good in our workplaces, in our communities, and in our relationships to the glory of God. I'm going to hand over now to Toby and the team who are going to lead us in a response on. So thanks, guys. Christ, my redeemer, with arms spread out wide, endured the sting my sin in his side beaten and bloody with eyes fixed on mine the love of the savior poured out for his pride
Yeah, it's great to be reminded, isn't it, that Christ is Lord of all. John is uh, texting. He said he feels like there might be those looking around at the world at this moment and are really doubting God. But this verse from Psalm 23 says, For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth praying that people struggling with doubt will seek and find him today. He can be trusted and his character is to love what is just and good. He can more than stand up to our doubts and questions. So thanks for texting that in, John. Yeah, and I have one here from Becca. She says that she thinks God wants to declare his love over us this morning, mm. that we are his and he is ours. Thank she you. sent in... Song of Solomon um, 2 verse 16 which says my beloved is mine and I am his mm. thank you so much for sending that in yeah look we do believe in prayer we do believe that we pray to a living God we're looking forward to the week of prayer but actually we're happy to pray for you now and if you email in prayer at redeemerlondon.org somebody would email you back they'd call you back we would love to stand with you in prayer so please, email us in. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I'm just going to speak a blessing over us this morning. So may God bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Yeah. Golly, there's so many ways that we are blessed. One way you'll be blessed is watching the kids. I tell you, I saw it this morning, Brittany and the team, outstanding wonderful as families we want to be those that love and honor god together so if you've not watched it you can watch it on the youtube channel it's there for the week we're worth viewing that one anyway we are done now yeah. so all it is for us is to say bye. bye thanks so much for watching see you next week have a great week goodbye, goodbye. see you next sunday Sunday. Bye. Bye. Have a great week. Make sure you come back next week. Make sure you come back next week. Say bye.